another reason I believe in the reincarnation, and I didn't think about it until Brian really touched on it. You said, you know, <laughs> moments, you know, it feels like they're lighter. People are lighter. Mm-hmm. So I've I've been blessed and cursed to have held on to the hand or, you know, have your hand on a loved one as they're passing. And both times before it, you know, nurses and, and, and everyone came in and did the, you know, actual time of death or whatever. And I remember both instances very, very vivid. I mean, I'm kind of uncomfortable talking about it, but both times uh, before it was talked about in the room, it's like in my, both times I wasn't the only one in the room. Um, but the first time I was still a kid and I had just gotten off a near death experience of my own which is the, uh, you know, what the scar is there for with the bleeding brain. And uh, when he did go, before anyone else said anything or whatever, because we knew it was coming and, and, and he was finally, you know, we were telling him be at peace and everything. Um, my grandma, who's also very super, you know, supernatural, superstitious, she's from Mexico and all that, uh, they kind of looked at each other and 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 we knew he was no longer there. Towel on your feet, later make up the difference. Toss and turn in your sleep. Family, I know you miss him. Should they ride from the streets. Starting to get the bitch, fight for your life and feet. Watch how you turn out winning. This shit is easy. Me. I play the So that's why I look like that. God damn. Yeah, it was all bad. Yeah, I mean, but shit, fuck it. Free is free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, I guess we I guess we can get going. You ready when y'all ready? <clears throat> Three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Unleashed Godcast. In this episode of Godcast, we got three interesting questions or topics yet again, just like the first episode. However, we're going to jump right into it. We don't got to do any intros like we did the last time. Um, yeah, we're just going to get right into it. Unless you guys got anything to say. Uh, well, I'll I'll I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, go ahead, Jay. Oh, no, I'm good. Go ahead. I'm, I'm like I'm already. Yeah, I would just say uh, we're open to anything anyone wants to ask us. Go ahead and comment. Get with Godly Potential. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and huddle about it and probably address it. But if anyone wants to hear anything specific, let us know. And, and we're more than willing to talk about it. So just fire beware on that. That yeah, is that- true. I know it. Yeah. Like if it's any topics people want us to discuss openly like on this forum yeah like drop it down in the comments like hey we open to it it's kind of like that meme like change my mind like <laughs> hey like we'll debate anything like just put it down there. yeah and with that said keep in mind that we are not professionals we don't claim to be experts on majority of these things we're talking about this is just our un- unlicensed opinions and take that with take with that as you will but without further ado let's get into this first topic this question that i suggested is is it okay to do something wrong if no one sees it or knows about it that's the question so since i wanted to do this question, i'm just going and start it off right so is it okay to do something one knows about it? Mm. Yes, I, f- I feel like it is. Now, when you hear that, you might think like, what, damn, you ain't got no integrity. No, here's the thing. I know about karma and how it actually works. So karma works like if it's weighing heavy on your heart, then you're gonna have a negative consequence behind it, right? It's not like, oh, you break the law and something's bad going to happen. It's like, no. It's basically going to be, um, if you can justify it within your mind, then you won't have any, any, any karmic strikes against you, pretty much. 
And so that's why I say it's okay to do that. Now, I'm not saying just go out there and do just fucked up shit, no. I also believe in morality and all that good stuff. But that that's my belief on it. You want to tackle that, sir? Yeah, I think I got my answer on it. So with, with that one of uh, doing something wrong and whether someone knows about it or, or no one sees it, you know, it kind of goes to that golden rule, do the right thing when no one's looking and that's integrity and all. And that's fine and dandy, but I think that's been romanticized a little too much for reality. What, uh, what you might see is wrong might be wrong from an outsider's look or from your perspective or opinion because of different morals, different ethics. Uh, so, but it is dangerous, right? Because if, if, you, if you start giving yourself too many passes or you start justifying too many things that are wrong, then I think you do start giving away your, uh, your integrity or your ethics or your morals. You start selling out in a sense. You start using it as an excuse for doing wrong. Um, but ultimately you have to, that's something that's up to the individual, right? Can you live with it? How wrong is it? Is it, you know, with the negative karma? Um, is it going to hurt anyone else or is it going to only hurt me or me only or my, my ethics, my conscience, my morals. So if you do start doing it very frequently, then you're selling out. It's probably not a good thing, but if you have to, you know, uh, during an emergency, you got to run a red light. You got to drive like a jerk. Um, people see it or not and you don't seem to care anyway and you know it's wrong. So, so, that, so that's why I say it's fine in theory, but uh, it's not a perfect world. It's an ugly world. No one is without sin. We all suck at one point or another. We do sucky things to other people without realizing it or not. So that, that's that's my take on it. Yeah, and you really started to say something that I was gonna really like, kind of like lean into. Of at the end of the day, everything comes back to free will. So you have that decision to make whether or not you want to do something wrong, whether or not it's eyes around, a this, second, a third. You know. For being in the military, all of us, we was always preached about integrity and doing what was right when nobody was around. However, you have that freedom to make that choice whether you want to do that. Now, can you live with that decision? Yep. Because the consequences <clears throat> within itself could be a, you become a prisoner of your own mind, depending on the severity of what you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's many different scenarios. You know what I'm saying? So, like, let's take, heck, like, let's take cheating for example you know what i'm saying even though it's nobody around and nobody is there to see it and you made that choice to do it in your mind are you know what i'm saying like you're like you could possibly be entrapped in your own headspace and you know create your own internal hell so to speak as you try to keep this truth in you know so i mean can you do it yeah can you live with it that's up to the person pretty much and that's what I was getting at too. Like, can you do it? And I'm like, yeah, you can. As long as like, it's not weighing heavy in your heart. Now, I'm not saying that to say, look, I'm out here just just living like a like a douchebag. I, that's not how I get down. If I if I see somebody drop some money, they don't even notice it. I'm gonna pick it up and give it to them. You know what I'm saying? If somebody got shit laying around that I that I need that I want, I'm not gonna take it. Like, I'm not doing shit like that. That's not what I'm claiming. But my whole thing is, can you? You know. Yeah. And yes, you can. <laughs> as long as because so I brought up the whole karma thing because I feel like um with this whole sin thing, it's like, well, if you repent, you 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 um you won't uh go to a hellish afterlife, right? But oh no no, that's not even what I want to say. What what actually came up was so, hey, Jerry, you remember, um, mm, it was a while ago, you sent me a link to a, this video of this chick, she had a, um, what was it, astral projection, no, a near-death experience, and she was yeah. speaking to, like, like uh, angelic beings and stuff, and she's pretty yeah. much talking to him, and she was talking to, I think she was talking to Jesus, she said, and uh, she was like, did these people who did these messed up things, will they experience hell? You remember that? And then the, the spirit... Faintly, I've shared a lot of videos with you. Yeah, well, <laughs> so basically, right basically, what happened was she asked his spirit. I think it was like Jesus, or I don't remember what spirit, or it might have been a spirit guy. But anyway, she was asking spirit, like, will these people experience hell? And uh, the person was like, no. 
And that brings me to this, like you can do what you do as long as it's not weighing heavy on your heart. I'm not telling you to go commit some shit because it's not going to be. Yeah, it's pretty much like what can your soul handle? Exactly. And also, really? not to get off sidetrack real quick, but this is crazy. I don't know whether it's this topic or whether it's just an entire video, but when you go back and you watch this video, go back to the time when you first started talking in your introduction and you brought up karma. There was an orb in the room with you that went from one side to the other side. Oh, man, I'm not even surprised, to be honest. Like, I subtracted. it. Like, right? Like, once you go back, go back to the part where you first brought up karma, mm -hmm. and you're going to see it. And all the viewers, y'all going to go back. If y'all didn't see it, y'all going to see it. Clear yeah, as night. Nice. I'm not surprised. I got my ancestor all to right there. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> yep. So. But, yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I'm really, I'm really just talking from this perspective, just um, not really play devil's advocate, just to give a different hey. viewpoint of it. Wait, so say that one more time, because it kind of like, it kind of like glitched a little bit. Like, I'm not really, um, I'm really just talking about this, this, this idea or this, this, um, this viewpoint on this just to give a different perspective of it yeah because honestly you got that saying that goes we all know right from wrong but it's it's almost to the point that wrong could almost be subjective you know what i'm saying because because from a different person's perspective or their perception if they can articulate their reasoning something that you may see wrong ain't wrong to them you know what i'm saying they have a a, a viable reason to themselves why this is an okay action. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes down to the person, like I said, it, it, it comes down to can they so handle doing what is wrong and also do they perceive it as wrong? You know, because like, I mean, hell, like case in point, to, to like take it mainstream, you got Avengers, freaking Infinity War and Endgame. Thanos, in his mind, he thought he was doing what was right for the universe by wiping out half of all living things so resources can continue to thrive and we don't go down this path of destruction. You know, in his mind, he's doing good. But to everybody else, it's just like, nah, bro, like, what you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, like, you breaking up families? Like, you just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you throwing off the balance of everything that we knew as life here on Earth, and not just this planet, but the planets that span the galaxy. So it just comes down to the person and how they view their actions and things like that. Oh, yeah. 100% agree. Yeah. And it's just like, to the, to, to the rabbit, the wolf is so evil. You know what I'm saying? The, the, to mm -hmm. the rabbit, the wolf is not going to the rabbit is, is not going to justify the wolf's actions, or I mean the fox, yeah. or whatever predator is after them. It's not going to justify it. But to that, it's like nah, like this is how I survive. This is how I got to eat. And so yeah, it definitely is subjective. <clears throat> it definitely mm -hmm. is. So is it okay to do something wrong if no one sees or knows about it? I believe you it's can. Up to you. Yes, at what point? <laughs> at your own personal price. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's up to you. Now, that's my stance on it. Yep, but I guess that wraps up the first question, the first topic. <clears throat> Moving on to the second one. Now, this question, this topic was suggested by, by Steve. And this question is, why are people told to respect the dead? So with, with that, um, in the third century, we had a uh, biographer, and his name was uh, Diagoras Lateris, and he attributed um, the saying, do not speak of the, of the ill of the dead, which was later popularized in Latin to now, you know, don't speak ill on the dead. And it's a Greek philosopher, uh, Chilon of Sparta, who, who came up with that, or that's who's coined or given credit. So... Um, I think people are initially told to respect the dead, right? Because uh, regardless of how you live your life, um, you know, life is a natural part of death and you can't have death without life. So, you know, you need that to go full circle. <laughs> I think uh, today it's taboo 
because maybe these people, despite their shortcomings, right? You know, we're all born with sin. No one's perfect. No one, you know, is ever going to be perfect. So they can't defend themselves. They're they're dead. Um, at, now, my answer, uh, should we respect the dead? I mean, that's why we're told to respect them because they're not here. Maybe uh, they can't defend themselves. That's, that's how I see it. Uh, should we? No. I don't like any sort of blanket punishment or blanket authority for anyone because um, there's plenty of uh, shitty dead people, man. Uh, I mean, you know, Genghis Khan did a lot of things, um, killed a lot of people. Um, what, what about King Leopold of uh, Belgium and what he did to the Republic of Congo? Uh, what about Hitler and what he did in Europe to, you know, fuck all of them. Why do they deserve any shred of respect? They were monsters, man. I mean, they go, go, anyone could just Google any of those people, Mao Zedong, any of them. They're terrible, man. Innocent. I mean, thousands, if not millions, millions of innocent lives with a handful of people I just named. And there's more like them throughout history. Those are just the big ones. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I understand why people are told to respect the dead. You don't speak ill of the dead. You don't want, you know, any negative energy to the dead. If you're spiritual, then that's a big no-no, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, fuck them. If Hitler's ghost has beef with it, then he can do something about it. I mean, they shouldn't have that respect, and they never will. So that, that, that's my, my take on it. I don't know why we're told today, um, but that's the historical answer where it came from. But, yeah, that, that, that's my answer on it. Why, why are people told to respect the dead, and should we? Um, that's why they're told. I don't think we should. At least not all of them, right? Yeah. yeah, and I'm pretty much with you. Like, I don't believe in that blanket kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, immunity. For like a lack of better term, for just all deceased people, because everybody don't deserve that grace and that level of respect. Because like you said, like you brought up some very nasty people from throughout history. You know what I'm saying? From the early history books to hell, it's people today who are just nasty behind people. Like we're not gonna get into the name calling, but probably a certain someone is <laughs> like like pretty much like in all of our heads right now. Hitler. But <laughs> <laughs> there he go. <laughs> but I guess it kind of goes back to that old saying, like you know what I'm saying, don't don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And it goes back also to what you said, Steph, about like, since they're not here to defend themselves, maybe it's the spiritual nature to it as to why they say don't speak ill of the dead, like bringing that kind of negative energy to a person's name that's not around could cultivate something or something like that, or I don't know, like have some kind of negative reverberating vibes emanating out, but it depends on the person on whether or not they get that, that, that level of respect, I mean. Not everybody gets that same level. Yeah. That's the main reason. Like, the part is up at the end and what you just brought up about, <clears throat> I say they, I, I believe they say, why are people told to respect the dead? Because those people who stand there understand that the dead can actually still affect you here in the physical. Mm -hmm. They say that because, yeah, it's a, yeah, they're, they're deceased. Like, their, 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 their vehicle has, <clears throat> has uh, pretty much broke down and stopped functioning. But that spirit can still affect you. So speaking ill of it, pretty much you're feeding it energy whenever you call a name, right? Especially if nobody else is thinking about it, right? If you're just the only person thinking about this person who passed away, they can pick up on it because they're getting energy from it because you're bringing life to them, right? They're being remembered. <clears throat> and you're feeding yeah. the energy if, you, if it's ill intent or whatever. And by doing that, they can, they can appear. Oh, you t oh, you talking shit? Okay, and then <laughs> you know they <laughs> exactly, and then and then they start they start messing with you, and all of a sudden you got bad luck, right? Especially if they're like a powerful, there's a powerful um uh, entity, like so. I feel like that's why they say you should respect the dead. Also, when it comes to like your family members and stuff, like your ancestors and stuff, like I'm an advocate for ancestor altars and stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, I got mine over here. And yes, they're dead, but they can they they're actually helping you on the other realms, believe it or not. This is, this is my belief about it. And so you should respect them because 
they're helping you. It's no different from let's let's say we were still in military, right? And we were on we were at work, and it's just just I don't know. We're just being disrespectful to whoever's on duty. We're not on duty. That would be stupid to do that because they we we might need we might need their assistance later in the day. You know what I'm saying? It's uh-huh. like, I just been a dick to do on the patrol. Now here I am. Fuck. I'm in this jam or whatever the fuck, whatever the case may be. Right. And I feel like that's why people say that you should respect the dead because they still can affect you. Yeah. But true. I definitely believe that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Speaking on a person in a negative light, even though they was a negative person, like how you said, like you're feeding it, you're giving it energy, you're giving it attention. I'm the king of bringing stuff and comparing it to modern day stuff. There was an episode of all the people out there who watched Supernatural where they had to deal with an entity that wasn't even real, but like a fake like YouTube channel made this thing up and so many people started to believe it. Yeah. The energy that they gave this made up creature, entity, whatever, it became real. And it's just like that thought process is still the same. Like it's how they say ignore the bully, he'll leave you alone. But if yep. you keep acknowledging him, he's going to keep messing with you. You know, if he keeps saying that he's getting a response out of you, he's only going to get more aggressive. Maybe. So, I'm, I mean, maybe that's probably like what it was rooted in. I think a lot of stuff early in history does have a spiritual root to it. Even though back then they probably didn't know how to articulate it as such. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so, maybe that's what happened when... um. I'm 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 forgetting the guy's name, Seb, that you brought up that said it first before it was brought over into Latin. But maybe to him, something was revealed to him through a spiritual nature. This is why you shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. But he didn't convey that message, you know what I'm saying, for it to get passed down through history. Or maybe history itself erased it. I don't know. Yeah, and, and he was a Greek philosopher from Sparta. So mm-hmm. dealing with oracles and everything. Maybe so. I mean, de- definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I could also see what you were saying on um, how you say, you know, you feed into it and enough people started feeding into this nothing. And in all that fear kind of manifested this, this, uh, this imaginary Freddy Cougar, if you will, or whatever mm-hmm. it was. And, and, and I feel like that's very real today with panic. Um, it, it definitely happens in society where a lot of things uh, that, that aren't something to pan- enough people start freaking out about it, then it actually becomes real. It's almost like society manifested it with the law of attraction or with their own, uh, you know, own own negativity. But, yeah, they manifest it. Like, yeah, believe it or not, you can actually call up on Mickey Mouse, and that entity will appear because so many people believe in it. So many people bought into it it became real it solidified the, the 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 more subtle realms so like yeah like like you said if enough people believe into it or feed into it like yeah it's it's gonna exist just like um beetlejuice no, I'm sorry. <laughs> dude hey hey <laughs> nah but um was, it, was, it was a horror movie that came out um the nun or something like that uh, yeah, I think it was yeah. the nun. Yeah, like it came out like two or three years ago, or something mm-hmm. like that. That's a real yeah. entity. And I don't know if it's real just from movies and stuff, or I don't know, but if people feed into it, people give it enough energy, like a collective amount of people too, it's going to exist. That's why all these beings that people believe in, they exist. So whether you say, oh no, Jesus is real and Muhammad's not, you're wrong. Muhammad is also real or whatever other entity there is, they're all real because enough people believe it. And then that, just that energy fed, fed into it pretty much solidifies it in the most sort of, the more subtle realms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I believe that answers number two. So let's go to number three. This thing is rocking and rolling, huh? All right, number three. <laughs> this is from Jared. His question is, what happens after death? Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a pretty big topic, man. You know, it's one of those taboo subjects that I feel as though 
everybody, well, everybody on Earth wonders. You know what I'm saying? We all have our different belief systems, what was taught to us through various sections of religion, um, maybe our own personal experiences, like if you had an NDE or near-death experience. Um, the topic, even though it's very taboo, I feel like a lot of people find interest in it because it's human nature to be intrigued by things that we don't fully know about. You know, I think this is, the, I think that's like that, that very essence of our being is why we ventured out of space and why we keep charting the depths of the ocean. We want to know what we don't have a full understanding about. And in a lot of cases, we don't have that ability to really always find out the full truth. So it's just, it's very good talking points. It's a, it's a very good thing to let your mind just wander and, you know, go off into imagination land and get creative with what you think is fill in the blank. Um, obviously, when I was raised up, I, I was raised up Christian and Baptist to be specific. And, you know, and there is pretty clear cut, you know, it's heaven and hell. You know, if you live right, you go to heaven. If you live bad, you're going to hell. Like, it's no gray area. Like, bro, pick a side. It's up to you. So, obviously, as I started to grow older, like, certain things about religion just didn't start to sit right with me. Stories wasn't making sense. Concepts that was being delivered didn't sound right to me and things like that. Um, but to me... I don't believe it's as clear cut as heaven or hell. And honestly, I don't think that there is a heaven or hell in that sense of how it is portrayed in religious texts. I believe more so in the situation of reincarnation. Like we all have lived many, 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 many lives. You don't remember them because you're only supposed to remember the one that you're currently in. You know what I'm saying? Like how can you enjoy this experience if you're constantly recalling stuff that you did hundreds of thousands of years ago you know so i feel as though it's i feel as though everybody has everybody reincarnates i don't believe that it's instant because i do believe in in the other realm after the living from different reports and stuff that i've read about and watched they say it's a lot similar to how it is on earth you know what I'm saying? Like people have houses and you know, there's cities, you got friends, you got social structures, you know, they say it's so similar to this. A lot of people that when they pass on, they're confused initially because you're expecting one thing, but it's like, yo, this is not that much different than what I just left. Like minus, you know what I'm saying? The pain and suffering and things like that. So I feel like we do reincarnate. It, it might not always happen immediately because afterlife is also a school. So you will review what you learned or supposed to have learned during your time here on earth, you know? And then I believe everybody has that ability or, or that free will to reincarnate when they want to. And, you know, you may be like, like I may be a black man now, but I probably was an Asian woman at one point, you know what I'm saying? Or, I was deep in the heart of Cambodia, you know, it was like a, just like a straight tribal person. So, and I think like a lot of this, I think like a lot of the stuff that can allude to it is, well there's, well, there's also verified stories where you have kids who have solved their own murders. You know what I'm saying? Six, seven, eight year old kids who have went to their parents and they're just like, I've lived before, I was shot, and they hid my body behind this tree in the woods. My name was John. You know, the parents think that they are losing it or got a hyper imagination, but then eventually they go look behind this tree and there's bones. And then forensic evidence leads it back to a dude named John, you know what I'm saying, who was murdered and went missing 50 years prior. So I think it's a lot of stuff that it obviously doesn't scientifically prove it, but things that does lead credence to that belief of why I think that reincarnation is what occurs after death. And I'm going to hold off some other topics. I'm going to let these two fellas take the floor. Um, 
I'm, Brian, I'm gonna let you go first, man. Cause I, I'm still trying to put my answer together. Not... All right, <laughs> all right. So, what I believe happens after death is it depends on the type of consciousness level you had here on Earth or incarnated. I'm not just gonna say on Earth, but it's interesting because the past few days I've been watching a lot of stuff about the Egyptian Book of the Dead and their whole process of pretty much really putting a lot of emphasis on studying death while you're here. And just just all the stuff I've been been learning, it really just it keeps pointing to this life we call life is actually death. Because the moment we are born, we begin to die, right? It's just a timer. It's like it's it's like it's winding up, and the moment you fucking take that first breath, it goes, right? Or you turn the hourglass over, so you begin dying. And so after this death, we go into life. So I feel like that's what's actually happening. So here we're prepping to actually live for real, for real, right? In this afterlife. <clears throat> and so I say I, be, I believe it it um it depends on your conscious level because I believe if you don't evolve, you just stay at this same conscious level. If you stay stuck in this mind frame that the media pushes, YOLO, you only live once, right? So you can go out and just do silly shit, right? <clears throat> and just focus on just money, the American dream. It's called American dream because you got to be asleep to believe it. Like all this stuff, right? I feel like they push that because they don't want you to focus on your conscious level or your evolution. Because I believe if you up, if you vibrate higher, if you raise your conscious level, if you spiritually evolve, then you will have a choice on what's going to happen after you die. Like Jared said, he believes that you get the truth. I don't think you do. I feel like if you stay at the same conscious level, you don't evolve, you're going to just get stuck in this reincarnation or reincarceration cycle just over and over again until you, until you rise in consciousness, until you get to a point where you can recall what you're actually here for and learn certain things along the way. So when you actually do die or you actually do transition, you will remember everything that you studied, right? Because it's another thing that I learned recently was that they say we got 97% junk DNA within us, right? Like, what is that? I kind of believe that's our past lives, memories and stuff, right? And what I just found out, like today actually, is that did you know that whenever the body dies, that DNA turns online? I did not know that. I just figured it out today. Huh. A lot of your DNA, when you die, it activates. What is that? Is that once you die, you begin to remember? to remember all the things you did in the uh, previous lives and your previous incarnations, right? And so you just have this compilation of knowledge that you have now. And if you evolve to a certain point here, you're gonna have all that wisdom as well. So then you can choose like, okay, you know what? I actually don't wanna reincarnate. Or you know what? I think I do. Or I wanna be a spirit guy this time. Or you know what? I don't even wanna go to earth. Let me send me to Lemuria or wherever you wanna go, a different star system or whatever the case may be. Right, or you wanna you wanna reconnect with 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 the all right, with the divine. So, to sum it up, I believe that after death, either you get stuck in a reincarnation cycle, and you do experience heaven or hell states briefly, and then you come back, or you evolve to a certain point where you get to choose what you wanna do. Yeah. So, um. I have a little bit of a different um, belief, but I do, you know, believe in reincarnation. So, so the way I see it, um, the way I understand it is, you know, we're, we're here for X amount of time. It's not up to us. We, we, none of us know, right? Some of us have way less sand in our hourglass. Some of us have way more. Um, but ultimately I think when you die, your soul goes up for judgment and, 
and it goes in, in the courtroom of, of karma right? and, and the decisions you made with, with the life that you just finished. Um, and if you always acted on pure animal instinct and all you fed was your animal spirit, where, and when I say that, I mean your basic animal instincts, the instincts that, that, that all the other animals on the planet have, but, but we have something different where we can stop and think. We just don't, you know, procreation is one, right? Animals, most, a majority, overwhelming majority in the animal kingdom don't care for a specific partner, soulmate, whatever. Monogamy only exists in so many species. Um, so if you only feed into that, I think when you're reincarnated, you don't have a decision. The, the, the decision of whether you, whether you um, stay on the same plateau, whether you downgrade or upgrade is, is based off the actions you make um, and the choices and really karma that, that you have. Um, and if you've basically only fed your animal instinct, you're gonna come back as something lesser and you're gonna have to figure it out. Now, maybe you're still born as a human, but you're born into a, uh, um, a more difficult circumstance or a less privileged circumstance with a lot more stressors which make you more susceptible to staying in that cycle where you're a product in your environment because you respond to everything in the external world. And if it's all negative, negative crap, and you're feeding that animal instinct by responding to all that negative crap, then, then you're gonna go down another cycle until you get it right. Because I, I think ultimately, uh, if you want to, what I believe in is you have enough reincarnation and I, you know, I don't think I got it right on this life. Now, granted, I don't know when my story ends, and I don't know what is to be done yet, but if it ends right now, I don't think I got it right. I think I plateaued too much in my life. So I haven't done a whole lot of great. I haven't done really a whole lot of bad. I, I've been aware, but I, I personally believe I get a second shot into similar circumstances. But other people that are that I think better than that are better than me, I think uh, their soul gets to be allowed to go at peace. When you when you recreate, you go to Nirvana, you go to the divine, and you're reunited with one. I think that's the ultimate goal because to be honestly, I would not want to be reborn into this life cycle, even though I've had a decent life and, and, you know, seen, seen a lot of cool things. And I've seen a lot of terrible, tragic things, man. We've all been to too many funerals for our age. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really think the whole goal in life is to, to finally obtain that peace where you don't have to reincarnate into this terrible planet. There's still a lot of terrible things. There's a lot of beautiful things as well. But because there's so much terrible, I don't really think this is true paradise. I don't think it's true uh, bliss. I don't think it's it's because it, it's not. Look how crazy it is. Look how you know. <laughs> uh, so I think um, you die, and then based off your actions, you're gonna you're gonna if you were you know one of those top notch cream of the crop, a hey, go be at peace. Go be at peace because every religion you want to seek peace. We always say, oh, we hope they find peace. Or, you know, they're at peace and this and that. So why would all these different religions, cultures, uh, you know, races, genders, all different ages throughout the history of time, we always want to say, you know, be at peace. Or may you go in peace. Or, you know, peace be upon him for, for, for Islam when they speak upon, about Muhammad. They say, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So why would we say that if that's not the ultimate end game? So I think uh, you, you, you die and then you, you face the judge, and the judge to me is karmic law. Lady Liberty, imagine said a Lady Liberty, just karma, totally blind, unbiased. Um, and then from there, if you're good enough, you go to eternal rest. And that eternal rest, I imagine it kind of as funny as it is, I imagine it's like this is the end, right? Where it's all the homies, you can have a halo, you can have segues. You want to be? You want to join? Right? Because at that point, if you made it to be so peaceful, whether those people you've enjoyed throughout your reincarnations are there or not, maybe in your own version of heaven at peace with the creator, it can be whatever you want. You've earned that eternal peace of whatever you want. So, you know, maybe someone you cared about doesn't make it there, but the fact that you're there, you can will them into your own eternal peace. Um, and on the flip side, like, I, like you said, if you do a lot of terrible things, I think the appropriate punishment is to be born into the same crappy uh crazy world we live in or it can't be crappy and crazy uh, i don't think it's always that way but the media likes to perceive it that way uh -huh. and, and the, worst, the worst type of punishment is to be born 
with no prior recollection of your other lives. Like, like uh, I'm going to go ahead and be a little nerd. Like when the, in the Legend of Korra, when she lost the connection with all the previous avatars, that's, that, it's like, imagine if you couldn't reference all your past lives. That sucks, bro, because it's like, dang, dude, I don't even get to save my progress where I messed up so I can avoid this in my next life. Uh -huh. So being born into a lesser circumstance with no cheat sheet, right? Up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, right? <laughs> There's nothing to help you. That, that's a solution, man. And, and that's my answer on it. Of, of, how, of how it happens. Uh, I don't know what we experienced, that, that burst of energy actually. Maybe that's your soul going up to judgment, man. Maybe that's you walking out of the lobby into that courtroom, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, with your soul I'm, manifesting and leaving and your, and your astral projecting, you're getting one last chances to say deuce to this plane before you go to the next. Okay. So that's my and take. I, yeah, because like both of y'all said some heat right then. I, yeah, like, yeah, like both of y'all dropped some gems. And it's like, I'm going to try to remember the talking points. Okay, so it kind of goes back to our conversation last week when, like, me and Byron, like, we both was just like, this earth that we're on is just a tear of hell. You know what I'm saying? It's not the fire and brimstone that was taught, you know, in, in Christianity and, you know, like, things like that. But it's a version of hell. That's why how what Seb just said, we can have amazing moments here. You know what I'm saying? Love, laughter, like hearing a child's laughter, experiencing the birth of your child. You know what I'm saying? Like them absolutely monumental, emotional peaks in life. And then you have the lows. You know what I'm saying? Going to funerals and turning on the news and hearing about active shooters, murder, murder, suicide, abuse, you know, it's like, it's a hell. Like, it's not hell in the sense of all things are bad, but it's a hell as in it's like, you can laugh and cry in the same day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can, like, it's very high highs and very low lows. And I believe like when you transition, you transition from them low lows based off of what you said, Brian, of like, your vibration level. Like if you're vibrating high enough, you come, you're going to kind of distance yourself away from the lower realms, yep. so to speak. And and when I say like, I feel as though you decide whether or not you want to reincarnate, I believe it's, and it's not even just reincarnating here on Earth. I believe we reincarnate to different planets, different galaxies. We could be aliens, we could be whatever we decide that we want to go back to, you know what I'm saying? And that's tied to our soul contract. Because I feel as though even with our life here on earth, we can't learn everything that we need to learn on earth. So you have to go back. It's like, okay, you completed that life. You had a pretty good grasp of um, love and relationships, but you need to go learn about patience. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to worry on, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you need to focus on gathering better understanding of people outside of your normal social circles. Like, you know, so like, I feel as though it's not instant. Like you can stay on the other side and they have different quote unquote jobs. Cause that's the human word that I can put it to jobs. Mm -hmm. Like, so you could be a spirit guy for a minute. And then after you tired of overseeing and guiding, you could be like, you know what? I kind of want to go like get us another crack. But then you got some people who just gonna be like, man, screw it, send me back now. <laughs> like, let's just knock this thing out. And again, like you're not remembering it when you're going back. And I believe people come back and they experience different situations. Some people come back and they are in a wealthy family. Some people who come back and they are in section eight. And a very interesting thing that I saw on a video recently, me and Brian both watched this video, I know for a fact. It's a YouTuber named uh, Brother Yusuf. And um, he talks about these kind of topics a lot. And one thing that he said that really resonated with me was he said, when people come back and they reincarnate, they come back as the very thing that they hated the most yep. in their previous <laughs> life. And maybe it's me. I can't speak for y'all. I can only speak for myself. And within the in some people will attribute it to the rise of social media and the expansion of mass media on cable TV. 
but within the past 10 years, I'm, and I'm just throwing that number out there, it's probably even more than that, but within the past 10 years, I personally have noticed more gay people in the world now, and it's, and it's openly talked about, and like, I come across a gay person now is, you know, it's whatever, you know, and it's like, I look at them as everyday people. I have no hatred in my heart for any of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't no different than any one of us. But I've noticed an explosion of their existence, you know? And it seemed like one time it was very taboo. So I'm wondering now if society is being filled with people who in the past hated gays. Because back in the day, gays were condemned. You know what I'm saying? You better not let nobody find out about it. Yeah. But now it's such a social norm, which how it should be. Mm. And it's just like, what if these are people who back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, who was just, you know what I'm saying? They should burn on stakes and they don't West deserve the air out of the Like Westboro Baptist Church with their signs. <laughs> exactly. So like, what if these are people who, who, who's, who's coming back and they're having to experience the very thing that they hated? That's, I like that. Mm. And it's like, and it's like, I believe I even saw a report where it was like the rise of the African American population in the U.S. is starting to increase. All these races, like, what if they're coming back as the very thing that they vilified? Oh yeah, like, bro, it's gonna be like, like mulatto. That's gonna be the the standard race. Everybody's gonna be mixed here pretty soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty so, much, yeah, pretty much like we all mixed blood already. So I mean, yeah. Um. Hmm. You said with with gay people being kind of the new norm. Now I know you said ten years, but then you said maybe more. I kind of mm-hmm. I disagree, but I know that comes from where I grew up in Southern California, right? Yeah, like we like that's been the normal for me. I, 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 you know, even growing up in the in the Catholic Church, man, I've known about homosexuality my whole life. It was one of those things mm-hmm. where it was never hidden. Never. Maybe I can thank my parents for that one. Um, the the world I grew I don't know, but for one reason or another, you say this kind of um, that you, you know with social media, it's it's now uh, I, it's more socially acceptable I think for sure. But I would dis I would kind of disagree a little bit um, that it's more popular. I think that is because social media allows things to see more, and you can hashtag you know pride hashtag gay hashtag homosexual hashtag what you know what I'm saying. There's so many mm-hmm. ways to, to find the content material that, that would be, you know, um, kind of the new norm or whatever. But, you know, predating Christianity uh, and, and the Bible and Judaism and Zoroastrianism, there was plenty of, uh, or in different parts of the world where they didn't know about those religions yet. Um, I think the Native Americans called it double spirited, or I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful. But they double arrowed, or they called it something, right? Or, or there's something along that pretty much saying that homosexual. Um, they 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 talk about homosexuals in ancient Greece, um, you know, the Persian Empire, uh, Japan. Uh, so it's one of those things where, you know, we kind of think it was now in America because it's a Christian nation. That's why it was so bad for so long, and even globally. I think the early 1900s really didn't become a thing until maybe the 60s or 70s where it was accepted on a small scale, but now it's where we're at, where it's bigger. Um, but I kind of think that's been the norm for a little bit. Um, I, 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 I don't know, because I've, I've always known about their existence or whatever, and I never had issues with them, man. It was one of those things where, you know, even when Don't Ask, Don't Tell got repealed, I had a hard time understanding how that was even a thing. We're in these mass briefings, you know. Yeah. You know, you and I were in when they got repealed. I don't think, I don't think uh, Brian was in yet. But yeah. I couldn't remember being there, and they're saying, you know, say this, don't say that. People might feel this way, and I was like, yo, could you imagine if they said, you know, replace gay with uh, black or brown or white or yellow or purple or green, blue or orange? And so, uh, you know, to me, I, I think I kind of see a different growing up in Cali, but. Yeah, you know that it was it was not popular because of, I think religion and and now we're more open to it as, as it should be right. Let people live. Uh, there's no 
I, I don't see the problem with it either, man. I don't know why. And it's like, I feel as though I was trying to word that in a way that it could not be misconstrued. It's coming from like a bad point. So yeah. maybe popular wasn't the right word, but it's like acceptable or the norm, the social norm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel as though like there was a point in time where it was not acceptable. It was very looked down upon. It was almost looked down in a way as like people look at pedophilia now. And it was just like, which is completely not the case. But right. now it seems like such a social norm and it seems on such a more wide scale. It's like when I was younger, yeah, I know about gay people. You know what I'm saying? I have gay family members, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, now it's very, it's very, it's just like, it's out there. It's like, and, it, and, it's, and, and, and finally it's accepted, you know, cause there's nothing wrong with it. And it's like, I think it's getting to a point of that and how you brought it up with how re like religion probably suppressed it quite a bit. I also think that people are now starting to kind of drift away from designated religion. Like people are a lot more just basing their beliefs on spirituality and you know which is kind of freeing up their mind I, I believe like the second you start to get away from religion you start to think more freely yeah because i believe religion in itself like i can't speak for all of them but i can speak for the one that i was brought up on which is christianity i believe that at the core they say it's about love but i think it's really rooted in fear like everything about Christianity is rooted in fear. Like if you do this, this will happen to you. You know, it's just like it's 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 ruling in just this level of a constant keeping you closed minded. I can't question anything because that's a sin. You know what I'm saying? I can't eat to the point of getting full because that's a sin. That's considered gluttony. You know, it's just like it's so many layers of that. I believe keeps you in a cage box mentally, but. Mm -hmm. To get back to the whole reincarnation topic of the situation, I just believe that it's, a, I think it's a lot of stuff if we look around day to day life, it kind of alludes to it. Like how you have, have we, and I'm, and I'm certain we all had it done before. We've all met an older person. They could be older than us, they could be our age, and they just come off extremely immature, yeah. extremely just like almost in an adolescent kind of level. And then you met somebody who's younger than you, and it's just like that person has an old soul. It, and, you know, it's, and huh? My my bad, my bad. Are you good? The, the those people that uh, that are ignorant to a point where it's almost like adolescence, where it's like you are not even. I also feel like those are those same people that would answer our question that we just asked. What happened? Oh, I know what happens. Do you know mm -hmm. what happened? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and then they Bible thump you with whatever religious text. I know. I feel like it's that same. Yeah. And I believe thing. and I believe those are very young souls. You know what I'm saying? Like they haven't reincarnated as much. But again, you can meet a 12-year-old and you're having a conversation with him or her. And it's just like, how old are you again? Yeah. Like, how is your mind that wise? You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like, we are, like, yes, we have our physical ages, but our soul has their own ages as well. You know, and I, and, and I feel as though that's why we go through life and we gravitate towards certain people because our soul may be close to relatively the same exact age. You know what I'm saying? Physically, you're not walking around looking for 10-year-old friends. <laughs> you know, like hey, I hope, age, I hope not. I hope not. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh freaking guy named Chris Hansen whenever you freaking come in. But I mean, but I feel as though that's why we gravitate to certain people. And I and I kind of feel like that's why we we like we almost can't get a connection with some people. You know what I'm saying? Like even though in your mind, like we should be cool, but you can't develop that relationship because it's just like ultimately like y'all souls are on two different levels. It's the frequency. So, it's the yeah, frequency, man. Exactly. It's like like you could you could you could vibe with somebody who just got totally different viewpoints of the world. But if like y'all on the same like frequency, like y'all can chill with each other and be like, you know what, I, I don't mind this person. You know, like they're actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. once, once you actually get to know them, even though their viewpoints may be to you way out there, you be like, you know what? I, st I, I, I still can vibe with them. It's just that frequency. And I feel like that's that um that consciousness level. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel as though 
I think we all are in agreement. We wouldn't want to freaking reincarnate to this earth. Like this earth sucks. <laughs> I mean, like it's too much, it's too much hatred and stuff. So I think we all have that choice of where we want to go. You know, I'm not certain if we get to choose our circumstance or like if we did want to come back to earth. I don't know if I have that ability to be like, I want to come back to a rich family. Or I want to come back to a poor family. I want to be a white person. I want to be an Asian person. I don't know. We might have that freedom. But again, like this whole topic within itself is just pure speculation of what we feel as though may happen. And But I think a lot of stuff that, that goes on today on Earth within, like within, in front of us, it has a spiritual nature to it. But I think a lot of times we don't stop and acknowledge it as that. No, it's just if, like I said earlier. I believe like older people look at a young child and it's like, that's an old soul. I don't think that they're meaning it as in a sense of how we're explaining it. Mm-hmm. It's just a saying that was passed down from generation to generation. You know? And I think everything has a spiritual nature to it if you stop and really observe. Like, I kind of wonder if um, so when you get to choose like what circumstance you in? Yeah. Like maybe early on when you're a young soul, maybe you just get pretty much what's ever available. Like, look, you just come down here to have experience. I want to hear what your preference is. It's almost like you're in the military, you got a dream <laughs> sheet. You're like, all right, I want to go here. I want to go to Germany. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You going to South, you going to North Dakota. You know what I'm saying? It's like in the beginning, <laughs> you just get sent wherever. But then as you evolve, maybe you get like, okay, you know what? I want to go, I want to experience this. And then you actually get more of a choice and more as you evolve more and more, you get more of like a choice. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pretty much like kind of like more power and authority over your own story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that. I can see that. Cause I think it also goes in with like your soul contract. You know what I'm saying? Like before you incarnate and you sit down with your guys or your teachers and you know, you're really hammering out. Okay. Your curriculum for this life. Like, what is your intentions? What do you plan to gain from this life that you are about to enter? You know what I'm saying? Like, what lessons do you want to be learned? And I believe, you know what I'm saying? You jog it down, you come up with what you want to address, and then you reincarnate. And then upon your transitioning or your death, you come back and it's like, all right, well, let's see how you did. You know, but like, but like Seth said, the crazy thing about it, you don't remember your goals, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think slowly as you get older, things kind of unlock and your spirit guys will whisper in your ear uh, what you need to be focusing on. But I really think it's up to that person to be within themselves to hear the messages of what needs to be addressed. If not, like you said, you're going to be in this loop. Because I could call you and offer you all the advice in the world, but if you don't answer that phone, you're not getting that advice. No matter how exactly. Much you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we're not open exactly. Like people always sit here and say, like, oh, the like, oh, like that little voice in my head told me this. A little voice in my head again. We don't stop and take a look. Like it's a spiritual nature to that. Like mm-hmm. somebody is communicating to you. It's not just a little voice in your head. You know what I'm saying? Like information is being downloaded into you. Now whether or not you are receptive to that. That's pretty much up to the person. Like some people on this realm of this earth are so wrapped up in the physical, they completely block out the spiritual. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they just living on this vibration. That's how you see you got people out here who partying all the time, clubbing all the time, drinking, smoking, dragging it up all the time, you know? Because they're trying to max or cover this disconnect that they don't know what it is, but really, that's probably the disconnect. Like, you so wrapped up in the physical, you forgetting why you really here. Yeah, because they doing certain stuff, thinking that's going to bring them a certain satisfaction, and they doing mm-hmm. that stuff. And when they're done doing it, they're like, this is not what I thought. They're I feeding that animal spirit and those animal instincts. That's exactly what it is. And yeah. that, that's nothing but genes. You know what I'm saying? Genes in this animal body. This is trying to procreate, shit, eat, and that's it survive mm-hmm. with, with, so what you were saying Jared with your uh, listening to the voices in your head uh, it, I had a thought come to mind and, and it's almost like that intuition or that subconscious we talked about so I, I remember um, if, if anyone's had a near-death experience or just a crazy 
uh, something you can't explain and just, just a crazy incident in your life. Um, like w the most recent one I could think of was on, going on a back road where I live now to go see, um, I want to say it was Joker movie in theaters. And I went to go see it at nighttime after I put the kids down and everything like that. And it's a dark road, not very well lit. And there's a lot of deer out here in, in central Texas. And something just told me, and you know, it was one of those things is something I couldn't, I couldn't listen to my intuition until I really learned how to meditate and clear my mind. And then I could hear that intuition more. But something just kind of told me, hey, hit, hit the high beams one or two more times and, and look around. And I started to hit pump on the brakes because I had just gotten a newer car at that point in time. I wasn't, you know, I'd only driven it around for less than a week, maybe, you know, not very long. And right when I had told myself to pump the brakes and I, was, I had to look down for a split second or two, I was already starting to break. I, I hit the high beams, I found the high beam and I looked back up and lo and behold, man, big deer just ready to jump in the road. If I hadn't started to pump the brakes, because for whatever reason, I just felt my intuition. It was like the force, man. I yeah. felt a, like, no, I'm serious. I felt like something just tell me, almost like a Jedi. Something just told Because, you know, how are these Jedi do, doing these crazy lightsaber fights? They're anticip like they're just feeling that flow of energy. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I looked up, man, I, I was going 50. And then I remember before I slammed my brakes on looking, I was only going about 20, 25. Because I'd already started to slow down because I couldn't figure out how to hit the high beams. Had I not done that, bro, totaled that brand new car, and I would have missed the damn movie. Yeah. Bro, that's <laughs> how it works. And and that's just and that's just seriously one of those things where when you when you you know for a long time I, I was numbing myself, like Jared was saying, I had a huge disconnect. And y'all were there, uh, I didn't. and none of that was happening for me then. When when you're drinking that much and you're taking all these different painkillers being prescribed to you, you tune all of that out. There is no spirit. There is no force. Nothing can help me because it's it's altering your mind. You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because your true self, your intuition is telling you, like, something's not right here. But you don't want to hear that. You're just like, dude, that's a hard decision behind that. So you, just, you just numb it. And, and with that intuition and, and, and all of that, that, that is why I believe in the reincarnation. I believe in uh, that there is... Uh, punishment and there is a reward right uh, other and i don't think we have the choices of being born into a circumstance otherwise everyone would want to be born into you know a, a billionaire family everyone wants to be born into that land maybe that? no, no, no. And, and, but i think honestly i don't even think society, that would really be the case society overwhelming majority i think we should be in an annual agreement that they are superficial and that's why I gave that answer I did. An overwhelming majority would just want that. Otherwise, a bunch of people wouldn't be chasing a bunch of superficial crap wealth anyway, right? And, 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 and the TV shows that are famous wouldn't be famous. That, that's why I think an overwhelming majority of people yeah. uh, would say, I want to be rich. I don't want to. And it's like, ah, no, 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 no. That's not how it <laughs> works. You need hey. your story work. You need your character arc in order to see if you're worthy or not. Because I don't think any, everyone's worthy. Okay, so maybe... The people with that rationale, maybe those are the ones who become celebrities this lifetime, but they're miserable when they take their life, you know? Well, maybe, Cause, uh, yeah. Because it lasts. Be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah, because it lasts. Like, they probably like, you know, I, w I just want to be wealthy next life. And then they get it. Idolizers are born into the idol. Just mm -hmm. like the were born in the race. <laughs> yeah, because I feel as though, like, a lot of these celebrities are probably younger souls. Because and I think... How how you said um Seb, that like people will probably all just want to be billionaires. I don't really think it'd be like that because I think with that kind of thought process, <clears throat> that kind of thought process comes from our human side and our ego. So we would really want to embrace the materialistic side of this realm. But like they say, like your soul is your true self. Like you like it it it. I, it cannot lie. It cannot deceive. It will live its truth. So even though, if you're in, if if you're in the afterlife and someone puts up a hundred billion dollars in front of you, if that doesn't resonate with you, 
it's not what you're going to want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, if you've reincarnated hundreds of thousands of times, money doesn't entice you no more. Like, maybe understanding what pure love is or, you know what I'm saying, actual peace, like how you said earlier, like peace within oneself and, like, a still calm mind. But I do feel like a lot of these celebrities are the younger souls who just like, oh, yeah, give me the money, give me the fame. You know, and it's just... And that's why I think, like, you see a lot of them crack, you know, they overdose, they commit suicide, or whatever have you. It's like, they ask for something, and they got caught up in it, and just got lost in the moment, and pretty much in, like, the rapture of that decision. Yep. Because as soon as they get it, they're like, well, damn, now what? I got it. it. it, it now what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, so where do I go up from here? Like, I got the money. And that's why they got all the money. And, and then pretty much like what they started saying, money can't buy happiness. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it can't. Like, it, it can fix problems and give you more freedom. But at the end of the day, man, happiness is all within. It's not external. Oh, this is true. So it's like, it comes down to that person. You know what? Something else I wanted to say, too. So with the the, the question, what happens after death? So... If you don't know, there's there's scientific evidence that shows that once the person dies, something leaves the body, or rather, let me rephrase that. There was a study done or a case done where they they, they weigh they, they was weighing the, this individual. They passed, and then that body became lighter by some amount of grams, right? And that's basically goes to show you that. The soul is actually a real thing, and it that that weight that left was pretty much that soul leaving. So, the the more I talked about some of the stuff I feel like happens out there, but I feel like the stuff that's real imminent that happens. So I've been told that a lot of people say, "Oh, you see a white light whenever you pass, right? Right? Whenever you die." Some people speculate, say, "What if that's like you going into your next life, and that's just pretty much the lights of the um, the hospital room, right?" You've been birthed into a new body. And I kind of, I, I, I could entertain that and also hear it. But if you wait a little bit longer, there's this green light. There's this, this astral light that takes you out of that reincarnation cycle. Because from what I understand, that white light is that reincarnation cycle. And that green light is the one that takes you out of that. So you can go talk to your ancestors and your spirit guides. Now, if you have been given back to your ancestors and guides, they will be there to, to pretty much guide you through that process. But if you haven't, then you will just go to the white light, like everybody says, dude. So my understanding is that happens. And then, yeah, either you, you go into the green light, then you pretty much choose what you want to do, or you just get stuck in that cycle. I just wanted to share that little, that little part. Yeah. And that's a very interesting concept, you know, and, and it, and it kind of goes all the way back to what you said earlier when you brought up about um, how like a lot of this stuff on this level of dimension is programmed to keep us on a lower frequency. It creates terms like YOLO, like you said. I've been a firm believer that, you know, they they teach you to, oh, you only live this life once, just do whatever the hell you ever want you to do. There's no repercussions, go out with a bang, you know? And it's other various things that they program you through music and television or whatever have you. Subliminal. Exactly. You know, and we kind of just take it as a grain of salt. You know, it, it, it kind of goes back to what I said. Like, we don't stop and look at everything to have a spiritual nature. And by programming people to think like that, you're keeping them in this mindset that's like it's a prison it's mm-hmm. a, it's an internal prison <clears throat> so we was always told like oh when you die you see the white light go into the white light so if that is true that you pass and you know you see a white light immediately you're gonna think oh go to it yep you know what i'm saying like oh like that is the great beyond like let me run into it you know and then Sorry. boom and then boom, you get it pushed out, get in the umbilical cord, snuck and get like, bro. You're like, hey, I do not want to do this, dog. Hey, I can't move my head. <laughs> yeah. I even heard people say I even heard people say, like, maybe that's why babies cry, yeah. you know, because they now realizing, like, I don't F up. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yo, yep. I didn't want to do this. Another reason I believe in the reincarnation, and I didn't think about it until Brian really touched on it. He said, you know, <laughs> moments, you know, it feels like they're lighter. People are lighter. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've been blessed and cursed to have held on to the hand or, you know, have your hand on a loved one as they're passing. And both times before it, you know, nurses and, and, and everyone came in and did the, you know, actual time of death or whatever. And I remember both instances very, very vivid. I mean, I'm kind of uncomfortable talking about it, but both times uh, before it was talked about in the room, it's like in my, both times I wasn't the only one in the room. Um, but the first time I was still a kid and I had just gotten off a near death experience of my own, which is the, uh, you know, what the scars there for with the bleeding brain. And uh, when he did go, before anyone else said anything or whatever, because we knew it was coming and, and, and he was finally, you know, we were telling him be at peace and everything. Um, my grandma, who's also very super, you know, supernatural, superstitious, she's from Mexico and all that, uh, they kind of looked at each other and, and, and we knew he was no longer there. And then a minute or two later is when everyone kind of realized that it was else in the room, like, oh, is he, you know, and then that panic started. And, and then the same thing basically for the second time before anything had happened. And this is kind of where I, you know, where I do believe in that reincarnation and that intuition or the force, whatever you want to call it, right? Was because both times when, when both of them um, had left this earth, I, I kind of felt it almost like, I feel as corny as it sounds when, when Clone Wars happened and Execute Order 66 went down and Yoda just kind of was like, oh, like out of nowhere because he felt all of those Jedi you know dying at once Uh I really really when I saw that movie or um, when I went through those experiences and then I watched that movie again in life I was like oh man that's crazy Um, I don't know if I ever told either of y'all but y'all could talk to Ollie about it the night that 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 Highlander passed away Ollie and I were talking about it. Like mm. we, we were we were linking up in Chicago. My little bro just graduated from Navy boot camp. You know, so after we did the thing with the family, because my family and I went up there with the kids and, and their mom and all that. Uh, you know, after the graduation, Ollie and I met up and you know, we gotta go have some drinks, man. This is our dog, this is our boy from back in the day. And and you know, we were talking about, hey, you remember this time, remember that time? Oh, we were wild and remember playing Uno. Just all of that, and then uh, we kind of were like, you know, hey, have you t- heard from so and so? You heard from so and so? And then it's one of those things where it's like, nah, I ain't heard from, you know, I ain't heard from Brandon. Nah, I haven't heard from him in a minute. I haven't heard from McKinley either. Oh, I haven't heard from so and so. And it's like, damn, I hope they're all right, you know. And then the next morning, we all get the news. Um, the the mm-hmm. the two uh, the two uh, cops that were killed or that died in that plane crash. Uh, we we trained with Kate and Nate, or with uh, Nate and Casey, in Fort Bliss and at Lackland and all that, right? And and I remember um, I woke up the day before we had found out anything because I was home on Red Cross orders, right? My my team was still out there, and I remember waking up and and I remember being sick. And you know, ex wife is like, "Are you all right? Like you're sweating? You're like." You're, you're trying to breathe, you're out of breath. And I, it just didn't make sense to me, and, you know. And then the next day, you know, it's on the news, but the names aren't out, and the names aren't out, right? And I specifically remember telling um, my ex-wife that I was like, I just hope that, because, you know, I hit up Brandon uh, Webb and everyone else that was there. And I was like, hey, it's not our team, right? It's not anyone from our, like, it's not our team. And they're like, nah, but. It's people we know. And then I, you know, I found out through the grapevine who it was, and I was like, dude, how did I know? I'm in South Dakota, right? My team is still gone, and, and their team's still gone. I ain't seen them in months, spoke to them in months, and, and 
So that's why I say I really believe in that, re, that reincarnation process and that intuition where once you can tune out and really be in touch with, with you know, the universe, certain things will come to you like that. And, and so that's why I believe in that reincarnation. And, and you know, those experiences where like Brian said, people get lighter and the room gets lighter. And there's just like this, at least for me and my experiences, two where I was there and I held their hands or you know comforted them where they pa- as they passed. And then just the friends. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go into it, but how did you know not to go in that room, Jerry? It's just like, right? It's something it, told me. You, but you, you. But at this point in time, that's when all three of us started really turning over that leaf into this thought process and in this way. Mm-hmm. But I mean, right? Something you knew, which is without without and so so that's why i believe in it and that's how brian said you know it gets lighter the the way uh, the feeling i felt was like butterflies in my stomach but it like sucked the air out of me too that's yeah pretty much that's the best way to explain it because it was like yeah because i was going to go and something was just like nah don't go in and i was like nah i'm gonna go nah don't go in like go get someone else i was like oh okay that's weird all right you know and it's like and then I didn't go in. But yeah, it's just like, you know, it's like an inherent no. It's that little voice. It's that intuition. It's just everything on top of one another. It's just multiple different layers of, if you're open to it and you're receptive to it, it, it will come to you. You know, like mm-hmm. I've had situations where like, I've experienced things from, you know, And it's like, how did I feel that? You know, like, I know one time, like, my dad, like, he had got really sick, you know, and uh, pretty much like a diabetic. And uh, he got really sick, and uh, he ended up being hospitalized for it. Uh, He wasn't staying in my city at the time. And I know when I got the call, and, like, you know, he and I'm, I'm like, finally on the phone with him, I can tell, you know, he's scared and fearful, you know. He's very afraid. I could hear it in his voice. I never heard I never heard him like that before. And, you know, I talked to him for a bit until the doctor came back into the room, then he had to go. And then I'm like, okay, well, like, let me go take a shower. So like while I'm in the shower, I get overtaken by this wave of grief, fear, anxiety, to the point where it was palpable. Like my hands were shaking, my heart was racing. I'm trying to catch my breath and I'm just feeling these waves of emotion. And I'm just like, what the hell? You know, and I'm trying to ignore it, trying to brush it aside. And it's just so, it's drowning me now. So I hurry up, I take my, I, I pretty much hurry up, lather up, wash off. And then I go into the kitchen and I give me like a cup, I, I get I get like a cup of water and I'm still feeling it. You know, and I sit down next to Janae and I'm just like, and, and inherently, I knew. I was like, I'm picking up my dad's emotions. Like, I'm picking up the fear that he has right now of his current situation. You know, like what he's going through, the uncertainty of it. You know, and it was like, it literally took the breath out of me. And once I knew that that's what it was, it was like, how did I turn to that? Like, how did I tune into that frequency? That's crazy. And yeah, I, and it lasted like 10 minutes. Like I had to sit on the couch and like put my head back on the couch. And I'm just feeling it. It's just coming in waves. Anger, fear, scared, anxiety, just cup coming, cup coming. And it was like, it, it, it goes back to the ayahuasca thing. Like how we say, when you feel emotion, it's almost like you become that emotion. That was how deep it was. And it was like, I'm just sitting here and and I essentially just had to wait for it to come down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was crazy. Like, I ain't never experienced nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it just comes as like a look, as a knowingness. Like, there's no other way to describe it. A lot of times you try to combat it with logic, it doesn't make sense either. That's why, for me, like, Everything I do is based on my intuition nowadays, straight up. Majority of the decisions I make is based on that because it's senior to any other logic I may have. Any, 
because when it comes to, for me, when it comes to my logic, it's based off information that I've learned in the past. So I'm like, well, is that even applicable to this present moment? Sometimes it is, but most of the time I listen to my intuition, right? And so I have that ability to, I can make all the decisions now based on my intuition because when it was yelling at me, like you said, um, said when you were driving, you put the high beams on, you listened to it. And it was yelling at you, um, Jared, when you just finna go in that room, but you you listen. Because you, when you listen to it, it gets louder or you can you, you recognize that, that sensation or that voice more. And so that way you can begin to listen to it more. And I also want to just um, say, Step, uh, I know I know that was probably difficult for you to share. So um, oh. respect it. Um, it takes a lot of strength to do. So I commend you for doing that. Oh no, man, it, it's it's relevant. It's relevant to to what we're talking about, man. You got to share it. Hmm. Otherwise, but, what's the point of it to me anyway? Yeah, I feel it. But one thing that came up. So I mentioned earlier the, the Egyptian book of the day, right? There's this book called the Egypt, I mean, not the Egyptian, the Tibetan Book of the Dead as well. It's a documentary about it on um, on YouTube, too. You can just type it in. You can find it. In Tibet, they have a practice where when someone passes away, they'll have someone who will read these scriptures pretty much right next to the body. If I want to say a certain amount of days straight. And these scriptures are basically guiding that spirit into the path that they need to go into pretty much in the afterlife. And... I believe that's because, like I said, I feel like if you if you go into the white light, then you just reincarnate. But if you wait, and if you've been pretty much working with your guides and your ancestors, they will be there to assist you. I feel like that process of them reading that scripture thing, that person is pretty much guiding them through what they actually need to do. Because if they don't get that guidance from that person reading that scripture, they're just going to go with pretty much what they've heard, you know? Oh, going to the white light, that's what everybody talks about, that's what I'm gonna do. And then the white light's probably so bright, it's just, you know, okay, go into there. White equals divinity, so I'm gonna go towards that, I'm gonna be in heaven type of deal. So I just thought that that was so interesting that they sit there next yeah. to that, that person and just read those scriptures out. Yeah, the the, the Bartle told the Tibetan Book of the Dead is, is, is a very unique- uh, You read it? Yeah, because that's actually so what I was looking for. Bro, now, Seth, you know he read it. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find it. So I'm trying to find it right now. These are some of the papers I had written in, in uh, class last year. But this one's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, uh, the sacred text reading of the Quran. I mean, I'm looking for I'm looking for the, the one on the Bartle tool because uh, some of the one of the tattoos I have actually is one of the decorative skulls of the Kabbalah, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. That, that ties into that process of how they, they do the sky burials and why. And it's, it's so, yeah, I, I can keep going. I, let's, let's, I'm going to, because I'll go tangent. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that skull on your, on your shirt right now, is that, like, based around the, um, the Hispanic well, tradition of, like, what is it, Santa Morte? No. Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Um, yeah. Yeah, it gave me Coco vibes immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Coco, it, <laughs> that's, that's what Day of the Dead is, basically. The whole, that's mm -hmm. a very, I don't usually uh, give Hollywood props for doing something so bold, but that's one of the few times I think Hollywood has, for Hollywood's sake, that's as close as you get with making a successful movie that can sell everyone, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't seen that movie, go check it out. It's called Coco. It's an animated yeah, Coco. Movie. Hey, Coco is deep and ties into the same stuff that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And like me and Livers, we already had that talk. I'm waiting for freaking the soul from Pixar. You know, because yes. that's going to be dope too. I mean, like these animation studios, like they are putting out entertainment, but they're touching themes that are very mature. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, with like Coco, it's you know, it's sitting here talking about deceased loved ones, ancestors, people who've gone before you, and you feeding them energy. And yep. if you don't feed them energy, what could possibly happen if you don't? You know what I'm saying? And then you got soul about a dude who accidentally kills himself and he wasn't ready to end this life and his soul is trying to get back, you know, and it's 
definitely some movies that's worth watching and one I'm definitely can't wait to watch. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I mentioned earlier, like I've been watching a bunch of stuff about like um, death and stuff. And uh, one of the things that stood out was the fact that everyone today is so afraid of death, right? They're so afraid of dying. Like we cling to life. You know what I'm saying? Like you can be on your deathbed and you're begging and pleading more minutes. You know, I get it because you're with your loved ones and stuff. It's like if the moment we're born, we begin, we're already in the death process, right? The moment we're born, the, the timer starts. It's like sh- instead of trying to cling to life so much, there's something that's that's on a timetable shouldn't we be more in more focused on the preparation of what's after life we should be but i think it goes back to what i said not only as people i think that the unknowingness intrigues us it also makes us fearful you know what i'm saying because we don't know what to expect you know so you have explorers out here who will dive into a dark cave and go explore this cave that never had a human in it before. But then one of the biggest fears for people is a fear of darkness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like the fear of the unknown of what could be masked in this veil. Yeah. You know, so even though we should be preparing for what's on the other side, to us, it's like, we don't know what to expect. Is it gonna hurt? Like, what is it like? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I gonna suffer? You know, like I watch like a lot of videos and read like articles on like NDEs and stuff. And like a lot of people are like, what really surprised the hell out of them was how easy it was. They was like, it was literally like closing my eyes and opening. They was mm-hmm. like, it's so simple. But it was like, for some reason, we have this fear that it's just going to be the worst thing ever. You know, and I just think the very nature of, again, we've all experienced it based on this theory of reincarnation but you don't remember it so we just we're scared of the process of getting to the other side I think that's what it is pretty much yeah I agree and also it it just comes down to the animal body too I believe it's like once the animal body realizes like okay it may be potentially at danger that's when all that fear kicks in just like when I was on ayahuasca I was having a debate in my head with my mind because I didn't want to surrender to the medicine because yeah. I, I no longer have control of my mind. When I close my eyes, I'm seeing visions. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just had to pretty much combat that. But I feel like that's the biggest issue too. Just this body and this ego is just like, oh no, we're going to die. And it doesn't. It's all die. about self-preservation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's a and no and it's a time where, and it's time and a place for everything. So the ego is needed. In certain aspects, but oh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't tell people not to fear it. At the end of the day, we all gonna go through. You know what I'm saying? So it was like live in fear or just accept it and like, hey, whatever it comes, it's gonna come. And like, it is what it is. Like, so like, so to speak. Yep. You got anything, Steve? Nah, that's. that's I mean. I could keep going, man. But you know how long you want this video? <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're good. We're gonna man. make a movie in this thing. <laughs> a documentary. Let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> it did run time. <laughs> well, I mean, if y'all got anything else, that's that's so that's if you remember, that's what I think happens after death, right? So. <laughs> after all that, that's what I think happens. <laughs> If Bring it back. Go back 45 minutes. I'll say pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm finna just wrap this thing up. Um, it's been another episode of the Unleashed Godcast. Um, just like the fella said earlier, if y'all got any suggestions or anything like that, be sure to let us know. You can put in the comments if this is on YouTube. This is a podcast. You can um, you can hit me or one of them up um, on Instagram or Facebook whatever your social media platform of choice is. Just don't, just not Twitter, because I don't get on Twitter. But, um... 
Yeah, I say just add our contact info down in the description. Facebook, Instagram, whatever. It don't matter. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Until next time. It's been another episode. We're out. Peace. Take care, everyone. Yes, sir. Tall on your feet, later make up the difference. Toss and turn in your sleep. Family, I know you miss it. Tripping right from the streets. Starting to get the bitch. Fight for your life and feet. Watch how you turn out winning. This shit just easy. I play the thoughts.